Let's have a look at how to sketch quadratic graphs by completing the square. A quadratic graph is of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c stand for numbers. Let's have a go at question one here. So it says sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 12x plus 9. So there are three and sometimes four key pieces of information to help us sketch a quadratic graph. Let's start by drawing a set of axes. OK, so the first two pieces of information are quite straightforward to find. The first one is whether the graph is U or upside down U shaped. To work out which one it is, you look at the number in front of the X squared. So if you like the A term, if the number in front of the X squared is positive, you draw a U shape. So it's sort of a happy U shape graph. If the number in front of the X squared is negative, however, you draw the negative upside down U shape graph. So I think it's quite easy to remember because if it's a positive number, you have a positive smiley face. If it's a negative number, you have a negative sad face. So in this case, the number in front of the x squared is 1, sort of an invisible 1 here. 1 is positive, so we have a happy U-shaped graph. So we know the shape of the graph is going to be this happy U-shape. The second piece of information is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So remember, this is the y-axis here. So we want to know the coordinates of where this graph is going to cross this y-axis. So we know wherever it's going to cross, the x-coordinate is going to be zero at the coordinates of the point where it crosses, because everywhere on this line, the x value is zero. So we know the coordinates are going to be, if I draw some brackets, we know the x-coordinate is going to be zero, and we want to know what the y-coordinate is going to be. Now, one way we can do that is remember that every point on the graph that we're going to draw satisfies this equation. So here, where x is 0, if we substitute in 0 in here, we should get what the y value is at the point where x equals 0. So we can say that here, when x equals 0, we've got y equals, so 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus 9. 0 squared is 0, 12 times 0 is 0, so we're just left with y equals 9. So we know that the graph is going to cross the y-axis where the y-coordinate is 9, so at 0, 9. So that's one way to find out where the y-axis intercept is by substituting in x equals 0. It's also always going to be true that if you have a um, quadratic graph in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, it's going to cross the y-axis where this final number is, where the c number term is. So normally I would just look at this straight away and think, OK, the constant term, the number term here is 9, so it's going to cross at the point 0, 9. So two ways of doing this for quadratic graphs. So let's mark on our y-axis intercept. So let's say 0, 9 is somewhere here. So remember, we're just doing a sketch, so the scale doesn't matter too much as long as we label our points. So we're going to say that's the point 0, 9 on our y-axis. OK, point 3 is we want to find the turning point of the graph. So we want to find, in this case, the minimum point. So we want the coordinates of this. And this is where completing the square will be useful. We have this graph here. Let's complete the square of this. So if we focus on the right hand side here, so we have x squared plus 12x plus 9. So the method I like to use to complete the square, which I've shown in a previous video, is I like to do, um, here we drew a bracket, write x, close bracket squared. Then we put here half of the number in front of the x, so half of plus 12 is plus 6. We check on the thing at the end, so plus 9, and then we minus this number squared, so minus 6 squared. And that's going to be x plus 6 plus squared plus 9 minus 36. And if we simplify this even more, plus 9 minus 36 is minus 27. This is the completed squared version of x squared plus 12x plus 9. So these two expressions are the same. So that means we can rewrite this graph equation as y equals x plus 6 all squared minus 27. Why is completing the square like this helpful? Well, it's a good fact to know that if you get your graph equation in the form y equals k times x plus m squared plus n, where the k, m and n are all numbers, then the turning point, so the minimum or the maximum point of the graph, is going to be at the point minus m comma n. So let's see how that works with this graph here. So if you have a look at our graph equation here, 
we have our k value, so the number in front of the brackets is just one. But actually, this doesn't really matter because as you can see, the k is not involved with the turning point coordinates. So the k really is not that important. But what is important is the m value, and that's the number here in the bracket. So we have x plus 6, so m is 6. And n is the term at the end. So here we have n is minus 27. So be careful, it's a minus 27, because you can think of this as being like x plus 6 all squared plus minus 27. So n is minus 27. So this tells us that the minimum or maximum point, and in this case we know it's a minimum point because we have the u shape, is going to be at minus m, so that's minus 6, comma n, which is minus 27. So that will be the coordinates of our turning point. In fact, I don't normally use this way of thinking about the turning point. I just look at the completed square version of the graph and think, OK, the coordinates will be at minus this number, comma, this number. So I think it's going to be at minus 6, minus 27. And so I don't write m equals n equals and so on. But some people find this a clearer way of thinking about it. OK, so we know that these are the turning point coordinates. Let's bring back on our graph. So this was our step three. We found our turning point. And now we can add that turning point onto our graph. So the point minus 6, minus 27. So the scale is going to be a bit off here, but um, it's a sketch, so it doesn't matter too much. So minus 6 maybe here, and then I'll put minus 27 as far down as I can. <laughs> I'll squeeze it here. So let's say this is minus 6, minus 27. OK, so we know it's a happy shape. It's got to pass through this point and it's going to have its minimum point here. So actually, this is enough information already to sketch the graph. So let me try drawing that shape now. OK, so we've got our U shape passing through the right points. So this is pretty good as our sketch. You can see two other points we could add to this graph is where it crosses the X axis. So these two points here. So that's our optional step four. Let me show you how you would go about finding these coordinates. So using similar thinking to how we found the y-axis intercept, these two points are on the x-axis. So they're going to have y-coordinate zero. So because they're on this line here, the y-coordinate is zero. So we know that these two coordinates are going to be some x value and then zero where the y-coordinate is and another x value and zero where the y coordinate is. So the challenge is finding what these two x coordinates are. But again, because every point on this graph satisfies this equation, if we substitute y equals zero here and find what the x values are, then this will give us these coordinates. So what you want to do is put zero in here where y is. So we have zero equals x squared plus 12x plus nine. And then you want to solve this for x and find what x values work in here. And that will give you the x values of this coordinate and this coordinate. And so the points here. Now to solve this, this is a quadratic equation. So you can view this as a question on its own. Solve for x, this quadratic equation, x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals 0. And so there are three common ways of solving these. You can try factorise it. You can use the quadratic formula or you can complete the square. Even we've already completed the square, it might make sense to use that method. I've done a video on how to solve these equations by completing the square, so you can watch that if you want to find out how you find these x values. But for now, I'm not going to worry so much about that. We've got the shape and we've got the y-intercept and the turning point. If you're just practising sketching quadratic graphs and you're not in an exam, there's an easy way to check that you've sketched the correct graph. I like to use this site called Desmos, I'll link to it below, and it's a great way to plot any graph, but we'll check what we've just done using this here. So we've sketched the graph of y equals x squared plus 12x plus 9, and you can see Desmos plots it for us, and we can check the points that we've got. So this graph, it's the correct shape that we had, and it crosses the y-axis at 0, 9, which is what we had, and it has the turning point, the minimum point here, at minus 6, minus 27, which is what we had also. So we can tell that we've got it right. And if you went on to solve for the x-intercepts, you can also check you get the right answer here as well. 
So I think Desmos is a great way to check answers and it means you can set yourself some questions, you can create a quadratic graph yourself, so come up with your own A, B and C values, try sketching it and then check it on this and see if you get it right. So it's a really good way to practice. Let's try a different graph. So now we want to sketch the graph of y equals minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. Let's draw a set of axes again. So let's work our way through the same point. So point one is you want to see if it's going to be a happy or sad shaped graph. Here the number in front of the x squared is negative. So we have a negative sad shaped graph. We have minus 2, which is a negative number. So we want this shape. So we know it's going to have this shape. The second piece of information is the y-axis intercept. So there are two ways. Um, because it's in this standard format, you can look at it and think straight away, OK, the number at the end is minus 6. So it's going to cross the y-axis at 0 minus 6. Alternatively, the more proper way of doing it is you can think wherever it crosses, the y-axis is going to have x-coordinate 0, because here's zero so anywhere on here has x coordinate zero so we know the first number in the coordinate is zero and then we can substitute this into here and see what the y value is so then we have y equals minus two times zero squared plus eight times zero minus six that's zero that's zero so we just have y equals minus six so we know the coordinate is going to be a minus 6 here, and we can mark that on our graph. So 0 minus 6, let's say, is around here. So that's the point 0 minus 6. OK, for our third step, we want to find the turning point of the graph, and this is where we use our completing the square. So if we complete the square on the right-hand side, we have minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. And to complete the square using our method, we just want to have x squared on its own, uh, sort of 1x squared. We don't want this minus 2 in front of it. So in order to get that, we can take minus 2 out of everything. So divide everything by minus 2 and put some big brackets around. So in here, we can write x squared minus 4x plus 3. And hopefully you can see if you expand this, you'll get the minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. So that's correct. And now we can complete the square inside the bracket. So we have minus 2 and then we do bracket x close bracket squared, put half of the number in front of the x here, so minus 2, chuck on the thing at the end for plus 3 and then we minus this number squared. So that's minus 2, and then we put the x minus 2 all squared, plus 3, minus 4. And simplifying that further, we have plus 3 minus 4 is minus 1. And now we can expand this bracket out by multiplying everything by minus 2. So that's going to be minus 2 times x minus 2 all squared minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. So this is the completed square version of this. So that means we can rewrite this graph as y equals and then I'll completed the square version. So this and this are saying the same thing, but they're just in different formats. Now, if we look back over here, we can see that we have m is minus 2 and n is plus 2, so n is 2. Using this sort of formula here, it tells us that the turning point is going to be at, so minus m is minus minus 2, so that's 2, and then comma n is 2. So that is going to be the coordinates of the turning point. And in this case, because we have the sad negative shape, it's going to be a maximum point. Let's bring back our graph here. So we can now mark this point on. The point 2, 2, let's say, is around here. OK, so we've done the first three steps. So that's enough information to be able to sort of sketch and draw the shape of the graph. So it's got to pass through here and it's got to turn at this point. So it's going to look something like this. OK, perfect. So that's our graph. And remember, we've got this optional step four here where you can find the x axis intercept. So these points here. And remember, if you wanted to do that, you would have to solve the equation zero equals minus two x squared plus eight x minus six. So you would substitute in y equals zero here. Find what x equals. You'll get x equals something 
and x equals something else. And those will be the x coordinates of these points here. The reason I'm saying this is an optional step, this fourth step, is because some quadratic graphs won't have any x-axis intercepts. Sometimes when you sketch the graphs after your first three steps, you'll find out that the graph doesn't actually cross this line at all. It could be up here like this, and so it doesn't touch this line. It could be down here, or it could also just touch it at the top. So the turning point could be exactly on the x-axis, in which case there's just one x-axis intercept, not two. So there are three different cases. Sometimes your graph will have two points where it crosses the x-axis, like here. It might just have one point of crossing the x-axis, or it might not cross it at all. So sometimes this fourth step you don't need at all. OK, but anyway, we have sketched our graph. Let's check it on Desmos. So I'll put in the graph equation here. OK, so if we have a look here, you can see we've got the right shape. The coordinates of the turning point, the maximum point, are 2, 2, which is what we said. And it crosses the y-axis at 0, minus 6, like we said. And if you've gone on to find the x-intercepts, you can check them here. OK, so now you know how to sketch quadratic graphs by completing the square. All you need to follow are these three key steps and sometimes maybe this fourth one as well in order to sketch them. Thanks for watching. Here's another video I think you'll like. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic messy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.